Welcome, welcome to Wrestle Line, the show that kicks arse and takes names every time. Hosted by John Scott and Matt Essex. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Wrestle Line. And uh, this week, lots to talk about. Of course, the fallout of uh, SummerSlam, or what wasn't a fallout from SummerSlam, we'll debate that later. Myself and Matt. Um, also, uh, we're happy and delighted to have uh, Lucas Jackson from Dropkicks Wrestling Academy, uh, promoter, commissioner, actually coming on the show to talk about two local events near us and uh, also just a little bit of background about the promotion and events. Uh, so we're looking forward to that as well. But Matt, I um, suppose let's start at the top here. WWE, we were uh, talking SummerSlam the week before and, um, you know, I think we both, uh, after, what, eight days removed now, I kind of feel like it was a decent outing. Um, I feel like the whole, I'm glad they kept Bray Wyatt off TV, if I'm honest with you. I thought that was a smart move. Quite happy about that. But uh, Sasha Banks coming back, Matt. I know that uh, it's a big um, thing for you. You're a bit of a fan of her. What did you make of the return? And uh, was it, you know, does it seem like Sasha uh, personally may have got one up on WWE with uh, with sitting this one out for a little bit? Uh, I suppose you've got to be a tough negotiator, haven't you? And she did spend a lot of time off of TV and... You know, sometimes it's nice to actually do that because you get to refresh yourself and if you're feeling a little bit burnt out, it helps that way to actually be able to come back with some fresh ideas. And it mm-hmm. looks like that's what they've done because she's now a heel character, which I suppose will be good. I think people have been wanting to see that for a long time now, so perhaps we can get some really good work out of her that way. I wasn't so much a big fan of the whole thing where she's supposed to be a different character now, so how does she do that? Change your hair colour. Because, <laughs> as you know, if you change your hair colour, you change who you are completely. So I wasn't no, I too sure where that. they're coming from from that, but maybe it's just a whole new way to shell, uh, well, to sell new merchandise and that, and I'm, I suppose that's a good way to go about it. So we shall see where this all ends up, but uh, it should be pretty good, and working with Becky, it's a good start, and uh, you can't really go wrong when it's them two in the ring, I guess. Yeah, it was. Um, I kind of. It was one of those things when she come out. I did think like there there was some rumors going on that she was going to be there, but like that's been going on for ages. Like, mm. so it's like it's kind of one of those things. Like, because you keep hearing it when it actually happens, it's not as big a deal as it probably should have been for me. But um, I mean, look, fair play. I think it's it's odd because it's almost like WWE are sending a message to the locker room that okay, if you if you kind of um, you know go home as it as, as it is mm. and don't turn up for an interview that she was scheduled for, and with AEW literally breathing down their throats for each and every talent, um, I'm not sure. Like Matt, would this if this was 12 months earlier, would that have been the same case? Would WWE have taken the same approach with anybody? Um, now I'm not doubting Sasha Banks is a bit of a name, but even Sasha Banks like. I don't know if it would have been the same outcome if this was like 12 months before and they might think, oh, well, we can pay her sitting at home, but eventually she's going to go to AEW and that's a problem. Or do we now give them what they want? A little bit like the Revival, a little bit like some of these other people that we've heard about that have re-signed, have got small pushes. That's not something that WWE used to do, Matt. What do you think? Do you think that that would have been the case 12 months ago or do you think this is WWE adapting to the climate that they're in? Uh, you know, I, I kind of side with WWE a little bit on this mm-hmm. because I feel like they had the stronger negotiating standpoint. I mm-hmm. mean, her contract has still got a number of years on it. It wasn't like they, they were waiting out 12 months and then it could become an issue. They um, sort of had her where they wanted her. She had to do what they were told. Otherwise, it was just a case of sitting out for years. And mm-hmm. in wrestling, a year is a long time. You yeah. get forgotten about and stuff. So um, she had to come back sooner or later anyway. But she's one of those names that has that sort of pulling power. She can actually suggest an idea and it pans out. I mean, we all know how the tag team titles came about. It was between her, Bailey and uh, Sasha, and they sort of pulled heavy for that. And then, you know, it came about. The tag team titles were created and they were the first champions. So 
I guess she has ideas and people do hear her out, which is good because it sets a good example for anybody else back there that actually wants to put their idea, uh, ideas out, that they can be heard and things will be done. So it's a little bit of hope, if anything, for other wrestlers. Yeah, well, um, we'll see where that goes. I'm sure that she's going to get a push for a good couple of months. I'm pretty sure of that towards Survivor Series, um, I would imagine, and see what happens after that. But... You know, uh, at least they're doing something in that women's division to sort of add. I think it was getting a little bit stale even on Raw, so this kind of does you know bring something new to the to the mix. Um, other rumors and news coming out of SummerSlam, Matt. Like, what did you make of this like um, rumor going around that Dolph Ziggler had had a what was supposedly a handshake agreement <laughs> with with Vincent Kennedy McMahon <laughs> um, about possibly being able to get out of his contract post SummerSlam. That now not being the case by all, all accounts. And um, from what we're hearing, Vince would rather he does sit at home for these remaining years not to do anything. What do you think about that, Matt? And um, again, I mean, we again, it is like, rumour and innuendo we don't really know but what, what do you make of that story uh i guess these days you've got to have more on a handshake deal mm-hmm. haven't you um and Dolph ziggler he's been one of those guys that he would have been great on the indie scene and you know maybe a few years ago he would have been the top guy to break away but it's been done now and other people have done it uh it's almost like he has to play a little bit of catch up on that front now. I'm not saying he wouldn't be great in a company like AEW because I'm sure they'd give him tremendous feuds and matches and he'd be brilliant there. Um, it's just th- these contracts are no joke. When you put pen to paper and you commit yourself to something for a number of years, um, <laughs> you shouldn't be too surprised when someone holds you to your word and makes yeah. you work these things out. Uh, if he can get out of the contract, that's great. I'm sure like he'd be used better in an independent company than he would in WWE right now. Um, but he has had a fair you know, sort of go of it as as of late. He, he's been in a match with Goldberg, albeit you know that may have been seen as a bit of a punishment for him because he wasn't made to look tremendous. But still a name that he can say that he's worked with that not many people can these days. Uh, and he, he is featuring heavily. Uh, so you know if he can get more storyline work on, on and get on the TV, that's great for him. And uh, perhaps he we'll see working for the, uh, the WWE as a good thing again because uh, I, I quite like seeing him involved in the storylines right now. Yeah, too little, too late for me for Dolph Ziggler. Like, I remember a few years back at that, um, what was that tour, the Beast in the East business? Mm. His contract was up around that time and he decided to sign again mm. at a time where he was kind of questioning where he lies in that company. And the fact that he signed, you know, that's he should have gone really then. I mean, I know that there wasn't AEW, but Cody Rhodes, he left without AEW as well at the time. Don't forget this. You know, he went and worked for Ring of Honor, um, which at the time was very much perceived as a huge step down. But look where the, he's at now. So I kind of feel like had he have had the kind of confidence to maybe go and do that then... I think we, you know, could have been totally different for the guy. But I think at this stage of the, of, of the game, you know, I, I don't know. Is it so bad working for WWE, getting paid X amount of dollars? I know, you know, who knows what was agreed? No, Nobody will truly know, I'm sure. But, um, yeah, I thought it was interesting that coming out. Um, what else have we got to talk about? How about more 24-7 title mm-hmm. shenanigans going on? Mainly on my Instagram at the moment. I'm seeing better stuff on that than I am on the TV for that, that belt. But uh, I have to say, I am enjoying... And I might sound a bit biased here because I do know the guy. But I am enjoying what he's doing and putting the amount of effort that he seems to be doing on his own for that belt. But... Make no mistake about it. I really dislike the title concept of it. I just think that they, you know, they're doing out of the box things. But it's only because WWE really don't care about it. Because if they did care about it, they wouldn't be doing the things they are mm. by themselves. You know, um, is there any sense, Matt, that this belt will ever mean anything, or is this just always going to be the biggest joke since it even came out by Mick Foley? 
Uh, I can't help but think that it is some sort of joke and just nobody's in on it. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe some people are, but they're all having a little secret laugh about how this thing's panned out. (laughs) Uh, I guess the only good thing I can say about it is that creative side of it, where Mm -hmm. people are allowed to come up with their own ideas and and, uh, make a little bit of comedy, perhaps, out of it. Um, Someone needs to take hold of that belt and do something serious with it, though. I mean, back in the day, the hardcore title, which this this is likened to, Mm -hmm. um, that was taken a little bit more serious Mm -hmm. because um, they actually had to go through proper matches to win it. I I hope... You know, the proper matches they have had for this title have been a joke. Mm -hmm. So, hopefully, they can get the title on at least a credible superstar. Uh, Someone probably on the mid-card range would be enough. Mm -hmm. Um, Everyone that's holding it so far, they're just, you know, they're not even making it the mid-card grade. Um, Nowhere near Intercontinental or US title level. Uh, Hopefully, someone can change the direction of this title. Yeah, I've got a feeling that whole thing is going to be here, there, and everywhere by mm-hmm. the end of it. And who knows how long it will last. But, um, you know, got to feel for the guys that are in it, but at least they're trying to uh, do something different. Uh, very interestingly, something came up on my social media the other day, and it was um, it was like Seth joins the club. And I couldn't really believe the statistic until I went back and looked at it. I looked up to on Wikipedia and stuff like that. And that's the thing with WWE. They never announce this kind of stuff themselves. But if they did, it is quite interesting. The fact that only, yes, three guys have ever managed to beat Brock twice. I thought that was quite an incredible statistic, Mac. And that's even going back to his first stint in WWE. Um, those names, of course, Kurt Angle, Goldberg, and now Seth Rollins. So not even Roman Reigns is in that. Not Triple H, not even The Undertaker, mm. um, who guys have had long stretches, even Braun, long feuds with a guy. Um, that is quite a high, st- you know, I mean, it's a pretty heavy statistic, isn't it? Mm. To show where Brock is on the landscape. And I know we talk about 50-50 booking is ridiculous. But in Brock Lesnar's case, it looks like the percentage is more in favour of Brock on this one, Matt. Yeah. Uh, what did you what do you make of that statistic? Does that throw you off guard a little bit? Because even I was a bit like, is that real? Is that legit? Like, I, I just couldn't believe that only like three guys have managed to beat him twice. Yes, yeah, massively surprising statistic, mm. and uh, it, I'd be hard pressed to believe that anybody has that kind of record in mm. wrestling these days. Yeah. But just that the fact that WWE do have a guy that well protected—that's incredible, and that's what makes him a huge draw. Mm. Um, whether we think about it or not, uh, he does have a massive sort of win ratio. So yeah, it, it is good. You need that kind of guy to pull out as a special attraction now and then. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just thought I'd throw that in there as a statistic. Uh, don't forget, guys, if you want to get in touch with us like you have been, a uh, new email address now. Um, it's a really simple one to remember. It's simply, uh, and write this in, email at wrestleline.co.uk. That's email at wrestleline.co.uk. And you can ask us plenty of questions through that. Any suggestions, let us know. Uh, just a little bit now about the WrestleLine. We are... Almost hitting September, and um, by golly, we're going to be busy in September. We've got a lot coming up, and uh, I've only just realised, um, in fact, at the end of this month in August, myself and Matt are going to be in pretty much two different locations. Uh, I wrote a blog about this earlier. Uh, Matt is going to be attending the New Japan show, which, by the way, I've got to say, and I wrote about this earlier in my blog, and you can check that out on wrestleline.co.uk. Uh, but enough of the cheap pops and mm-hmm. plug-in from Mick Foley there. Um, I've got to say, Matt, I was extremely jealous mm-hmm. uh, when I saw that card. That is, as I was writing them down, those matches in my blog, I was like, how many more is coming here? Like, It's a hell of a card. They have... It's one of those times where you hear of promotions coming over and you think, eh, what are they going to give you? Are they going to give you, you know, exhibition matches and maybe one or two spicy gems? This looks like a typical New Japan card you would get anywhere, like any time of the year. This looks that good. Um, you must be buzzing about it so far, Matt. I mean, I know last time we spoke about it, you said that you didn't have a clue about it. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, now, I, tell you. I was just taking it for granted like I knew it was going to be a good show and that's what you got to do when you buy these tickets like yeah. when I got the ticket I had no idea yeah, yeah. what was going to be on the card I just trusted the company mm-hmm. uh, so I am looking forward to this massively mm-hmm. uh, it's probably I'm going to predict probably the best live show I'm going to see this year yeah. so uh, that'll be great uh, and of course brilliant to see Zack Sabre Jr. on the card um, every time I get the chance I love to see that guy because he's just so incredible in that ring and uh actually doing his work for New Japan has been incredible and of course 
Tanahashi, <laughs> yeah. who doesn't want to see him. A guy has been going so hard for so long now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, yeah, it would be great to see him towards the end of his career, perhaps, uh, but still just as incredible as ever. And not only that, of course, Essex's own Will Ospreay is also there. Um, when he's like a crazy talent. To Have you seen him live before? Or? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think you're in for a treat. Of course, um, Okada's over as well. Um, and you've got the British Championship being defended as 